then the other thing that happened that was like a real turning point was that I was on, you know, social media and I said something or other about how great Italy was. And in what I call the universe's great gift to me, there was somebody who came along and kind of wet blanket. And like, well, not everybody can just go off to Italy for the summer. And mm-hmm. it was such a great gift because the person who said it was somebody who I knew made twice as much money as me lived in a less expensive place than the San Francisco Bay area and was in a dual income household. Cause I was just wow. had my own income, but they had a partner as well. Plus they had paid vacation. I didn't have paid va- wow. vacation mm. and it's something clicked. And that's why I call it a gift. You know, this wet blanket. Well, not everybody can, do it. Mm. because she could have, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and been paid th- for three weeks vacation to go to Italy um, and ha- made a lot more money. And, and it was like, Oh, oh, okay. I was willing to go without the lattes for six months. I was willing to not buy new clothes. I was willing to not have cable TV. I was willing to not, you know, have, you know, rent movies every single, I was ready to, willing to not go out to dinners in the United States randomly in order to be able to afford what felt like at the time, the trip of a lifetime. And I, it could have been a great risk and it could have been, um, Maybe I'd gone and maybe I would have hated it. Been the first person in the world to hate going to Italy and eating gelato. But um, (laughs) it didn't happen that way, but it could have. And I was afraid to do it, but I was willing to lean into the discomfort of that. And that was when I actually made the connection. Like, oh, this is what courage actually is. This is it right here. This is what it looks like, you know? Wow, amazing. And the courage to do the hard work. And like you say, and, and... It's also really courageous to say, I'm not going to do this and that. And, um, you know, we should also just take a moment to acknowledge how amazing Positano is. And uh, (laughs) (laughs) that the fact that you didn't mention the limoncello there, but that's okay. Well, that's for another podcast. (laughs) Um, Yeah. Yeah. Well, Florence actually has my heart. That's, that's really the the area. Rome is a little too chaotic for me. The coast is beautiful, but really expensive and super touristy. But Florence, I really like just loved it. Loved Florence. Yeah. 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 So, so you mentioned that you actually did a sort of um, not succeed, let's say, the first time that you, you sort of left. What actually happened there? Um, I saved up some money and I, you know, I did this trip and I was like, I need to work for myself. This is the, you know, this is the time. And I, I felt really buoyed by my courage to so saved up some more money and uh, took a leave of absence from my job, intending for it to be a permanent leave of absence and within a couple months it was like oh yeah it wasn't if you build it they will come you know it was like you have to you have to have more than that and I once heard an interview with Scott Belsky um, and he talked about the concept of you have to build yourself a runway and when he said that I really loved it because I think with like any big dream um, including like building a business you know when a plane takes off the physics of flight are that you need enough velocity or power and you also need enough of a runway and you can't have like a long runway without enough power. You won't get off the ground and you also can't just have a lot of power, but not a runway because the Mm -hmm. two actually have to work together. And I think the same thing is true about where I was in that place. It's like, I needed the, I keep wanting to go like this. (laughs) Um, I needed the, 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 the the length of the runway is time and the velocity is the effort you're putting in the direction of your dream. And you've got to have that effort and you've got to put it over time. And mm. you, you really just can't get one or the other. There are a lucky few who create something and it is immediately well received and goes viral and they never have to work a day in their life again. And we've all heard of those people, but really, if you dig into their stories and you yeah. guys are in the business of this, so I bet you'll tell me it's true. What you find is that the, the supposed luck was, you know, 10 years of them doing something before they had a big break. So it might've come very fast when they had the big break, but actually the runway was building. Yeah. 100%. We, we can't uh, relate to them more. Like <laughs> we, we, we talk about this every single day about, you know, you just, uh, <laughs> have to be patient in everything that you do, you know, and, um, and that's what we constantly remind ourselves about, you know, about our, our podcast in particular is like, you know, we got to do the good work, 
be consistent with it, be patient. Things will eventually happen. And, um, and the, the runway analogy is also really important, especially when it comes to finance, you know, like financially, you have to give yourself a, mm-hmm. a good enough runways to, to um, deal with those lean times when you're not earning money as a, as a new entrepreneur, because yeah, it's not easy. It's not anywhere near as easy as you might think. Um, I always think that working a full-time job is actually a lot easier than, than working as an entrepreneur. Um, and it's funny before I actually did the switch myself, I thought it was the complete opposite. You know, I thought it was like, cool, you're an entrepreneur. It's like flexible and like all this sort of thing. But, <laughs> <laughs> but actually it's a, it's a different, uh, it's a different ball game completely. Yes. Um, yeah. Yes. Yeah. But, but of course with it's, you know, everything has like, you know, uh, say like good and bad and, and there's, there's, there's just so much other good stuff to it. So that's, mm. that's really cool. Um, but just, I guess, looking back now, like for yourself, you know, I guess in the last sort of nine years since you, you've, gone full-time in your coaching you've achieved a hell of a lot in, in a fairly short space of time you know you, you started with your one-on-one coaching you've now developed a coaching program uh, you've become a mom uh, you've written a book and you like just in, you've inspired I guess thousands of other people how does it kind of make you feel when you when you look back on those sort of nine ten years now um hmm well, it still feels funny to hear someone say you've done or succeeded or so much. You know, I don't, I don't sit around feeling like, oh, I've done so much. <laughs> it doesn't, <laughs> you know, it doesn't mean I'm not proud of the things I've done, but it just doesn't feel um, that way. Um, I, I've always been really impatient for the success if, if you really must know, I, I've always wanted it to have happened five years earlier than it actually mm-hmm. happened. I wanted a book 10 years ago, you know, I wanted, and I, I can look at the right timing, but even now today, the things that I want for myself and for my life are, are like, Oh, I want it now. Like universe, if you're listening, I'm calling it in now. Like, let's <laughs> do it now. Like I'm, I'm ready now. Like I do you know, and I think that, um, I think when I, when I look at the trajectory of it all, I guess where I go is if I could tell myself anything that, that some of that wanting it to happen right away is like, because maybe I was afraid that it wouldn't happen. So I wanted the proof to show up as quickly as possible that it was viable. And it's been a huge growth lesson in letting things unfold organically and in their right timing at the same time that I would want to tell that, that person that I was when I first started, like, like, it's actually going to be okay. Maybe Mm. don't quit your job yet. (laughs) Maybe (laughs) wait for that part. Um, but it's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm. Waking at dawn, packing the gear, September tour and up in the air. Stop at the toll, digging for change, snowy Cape Fold mountain range. Gotta be quick so 